welcome to the another episode of my youtube channel data science with sam this vlog is a continuation of the computer vision series that i started a couple of months back in my previous vlog i talked about image classification i showed you how we can build your first image classification model in using neural network technique and also classify images of cat and dog if you missed that vlog then i'll definitely recommend you to go back to my channel and watch that vlog before you move further with this one in today's blog, I'll talk about phase detection, another very important computer vision technique that we are using in the industry world. Now let's move to the next section to see how this phase detection actually work and how it differs from the phase recognition mechanism. Phase detection is kind of gives the computer the ability to detect anything other than nothing. For example, when you are seeing an image, you might be have that image might have like two to three different faces. So how computer can detect those faces within that image? So phase detection will help in that aspect. Now, how does it differ from phase, you know, face recognition? But for face recognition, it's not only detects the faces in within the image, it also tells the user that what particular face that is. And this gives an identity to that particular face within that image. Now for face detection, it's identified the presence of people faces within digital image. So in order to work that, so face detection application use different sort of machine learning uh, models or formulas known as algorithm to detect that human face with larger images. So it doesn't matter how many faces are there within an image, it should be able to detect all the faces as long as they belong to human class or as long as the model or the algorithm has been trained to detect human faces. And the rest, uh, on the other side, for face recognition, it basically describes a kind of like a biometric technology as it not only gives computer the ability to detect face within images, but it also attempts to establish whose face it is. For example, like if uh, we upload a picture to Facebook, Facebook sometimes gives a suggestion to tag a particular person in that image. So how Facebook model would determine because the Facebook model already recognized that face using its face recognition model. So that gives, uh, you know, that gives uh, Facebook a kind of like an ability to provide a suggestion that, okay, so this person uh, might be there in that image. So please tag him or her in the image. So that's how the face recognition model works within uh, that Facebook system. Now, the next thing is that what kind of popular model we use in order to perform face prediction or recognition. So there are plenty of libraries that are available in Python, like OpenCV, or FaceNet, MTCNN, or even face recognition models that you can use to build your first face recognition uh, detection model uh, for classification purpose. And when I'm talking about classification, it basically classifying whether the, any the human faces are uh, present, existed within images and what particular face that is. Now, you must be wondering that how computer performs that underlying face recognition algorithm. So the way it does, the way it actually uh, happens is first algorithm try to understand a similarity between faces. Like for example, if you pass these two faces into your face recognition algorithm, what it does that it uh, tries to transform those image features into an embedding vectors like this. And so both these images are different. So they have a different embedding vectors. And then after that, they consolidate both the embedding vectors together and apply logistic regression on top of that. Now, if those two images are same, then the embedding vector should provide an output in the form of binary one. But if the pictures are not same, the images are not same or belong to a same person, then it will give you an output in the form of zero. That means uh, the computer basically perform binary classification to understand whether those images are similar or not. So that's one way of computer vision model determine the uh, you know, face recognition the approach and also it determines whether the images belong to the same person or not. The second approach is triplet loss, where computer already use an image as benchmark. Uh, so in the computer vision term, we call it an, as an anchor image, like this person's image is an anchor image over here. Now, then the computer would actually, uh, the model would actually uh, get uh, get two more you know, images of input. So like uh, this person, uh, it's actually an image of the same person. So this is actually a positive image. And we also feed 
another image to the model, which is doesn't belong to the same person. So computer usually have one anchor or distant image, and we uh, and we basically feed the model with two more images. One is a similar image, another one is under uh, image of different person. So we call them a positive and negative uh, image. So what it does is the underlying model tries to determine the distance between an anchor and a positive image. It calculates the distance between anchor and positive image. And it also calculates the distance between anchor and negative image. So in the theory, the distance, the square distance between anchor and positive uh, image should be equal, uh, should be like less than or equal to the distance between anchor, square distance between anchor and negative image. So that satisfies the triplet loss uh, theory where the anchor and positive image should have minimal distance compared to their counterparts. And when um, computer would understand, com when computer would find out that the difference uh, distance between anchor and positive is minimal and it's less than the threshold um, or it's less than the other peers, then the computer recognize this positive image as the image of the same person who belongs to the anchor class. So that's like another approach that computer uses to determine that, uh, to recognize a face and also determine that um, that uh, image does have any other faces that belongs to the same category or those faces are already there in the computer database. So you need to make sure that your computer or your model should be trained with similar faces. Like your, mo your model should have these anchor images. Otherwise it will be difficult for any uh, computer vision model to perform your face recognition. So you need to feed your model uh, with the anchor images and then um, uh, perform the face recognition against that anchor images. Okay, so let's move to the next section and see how this face detection or face recognition technology actually work within an application. Let me show you an example of how this phase detection actually work in real time. So the app, primitive app I developed using Streamlit, which is kind of like a Python library that you can use for building application. I used OpenCV package, which is very essential to build any phase recognition or detection model. So first I'm going to upload a picture. So let me upload this picture of a famous soccer player, Zinedine Zidane. As you can see, the model was able to detect the face. It's also showing that there is only one image present in that particular image. So now you can see that, you know, like this is how the face detection works. It actually detects a face within an image. Now, let me see how this recognition works. So now, as you can see, the recognition also worked here as the computer was able to determine that this face belongs to a famous soccer player, Zinedine Zidane. So in order to achieve that, you need to make sure that your model has been trained with some anchor images which belong to Zinedine Zidane. So otherwise it won't be able to determine whether this face belongs to Zinedine Zidane or somebody else. For example, like if I try to upload a picture from a different, um, like an image of different, of different person, which was not being used during training time, then your, uh, your model won't be able to detect them. So for example, I'm just uh, randomly selecting someone from here. So let me um, just uh, upload this Al Pacino's picture. As you can see that the computer was not able to determine this Al Pacino's picture. The main reason is because the model, the underlying model hasn't been trained with Al Pacino's picture. Uh, that's why, you know, the computer was not able to recognize him. Whether, or, uh, but uh, you know, if you want to do the phase detection, it should be able to do that because here this, it was not able to detect this phase because it was not properly you know, aligned on the image. It was literally cropped. That's why computer was not able to detect this face, but yeah, it was able to detect Al Pacino's face. So always remember that phase detection is pretty easy. If for, for phase detection, you may not have to train, you know, you don't have to, you know, train the model with a lot of images. You know, it can definitely um, detect any faces without being trained by uh, anchor images. 
But uh, in order to perform face recognition, you have to train your model with uh, anchor or baseline images. Okay. Uh, so, if, for example, if I want to, uh, you know, if you want to make an app which can detect my face, I need to make sure that that more the underlying model should know uh, some of my face. It should have some anchor images in order to understand that uh, my facial feature are actually matches with the face recognition mechanism. So um, always remember that and next time when you build your uh, first face recognition model, always remember that uh, the images that you're gonna select should have an impact on your face recognition mechanism, but not on face detection. So that's all for now. Let's move to the next section to conclude this vlog. So that brings me to the end of this vlog. Hope you liked it. Hope this vlog gave an overview of how you can build your face detection model using neural network. I already shared the GitHub source code of that application that I already showed you. So please take a look at it over here in the video caption. And also please stay tuned for my next vlog on GAN, which is General Adversarial Network. It's also a very widely popular computer vision technique that's also emerging in the industry world at this moment. So let's check out that in my next vlog. And please don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel as more videos on artificial intelligence and computer visions are forthcoming. Till then, goodbye.